Hi everybody, meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Wednesday, and I can already see the the frenzy is already building about next Tuesday. So we've got a lot to cover today. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna we're gonna go in chronological order. First things first, as I'm, I'm I I firmly believe in this. You know, when there are multiple weather events inside, you know, a, a seven or eight day time frame. I take them one at a time and I try to focus my attention more on the one that's upcoming because that's the one that's most important really. And then, you know, start to look uh, uh, as, as best I can on the ones that follow. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, uh, uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. It's absolutely free. You'll get notifications when new videos come on. And I usually do at least one new video a day. And in storm situations, I may do multiple uh, videos uh, depending on how much time I have and whether I'm working my regular uh, job at, at Fios One News or not. Uh, but I'm going to try and do a second video later this, later this morning when the new GFS is out to talk about the second weather system. So we have the new NAM. And right now, of course, we've got a cold front that's moved on through. Uh, there's uh, some colder air well back to the north. The air behind this front is not all that cold. Some snows going on in the northern Rockies and parts of the Pacific Northwest. And you can see there's energy that's coming into the Northwest. And this is what winds up coming out. You get a piece of this to come out, and there's a high, a big high, uh, building down. So uh, the two of them are kind of moving in, in conjunction with each other. And then suddenly you start to see late Thursday night, the beginning. Actually, I'm sorry, this is Thursday evening, 7 p.m. You start to see the beginnings of some precip and a low that forms in northern West Virginia. Now, this is going to be a narrow band of of, of accumulating snow, an east-west band. It's probably only going to be about 100 miles wide or so. So you're going to have to be sitting right in the bullseye. And the weather models uh, are, you know, taking a low, a wave that develops in, in West Virginia and moves into Western Virginia, moves offshore. And you can see the snow area that winds up expanding. This is at uh, 4 a.m. Friday, and here we are at 7 a.m. Friday. So there's that band in the darker blues getting uh, steady accumulating snow. Now, given the time of year and given the fact that we are going to have, you know, marginal temperatures, with respect to accumulations, the way to look at this is that anything fa that falls before 8 a.m., if it falls, if it's a steady snow, a steady wet snow is what it will likely be, that will stick. But once we get past, say, 8 a.m. and the sun angle begins to become a factor, uh, roads are, are going to probably improve relatively quickly unless it's really snowing very hard. And the NAM does have, you know, this darker blue area of heavy snow here uh, across uh, central New Jersey uh, into Long Island. And then it starts to pull the low out by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Everything is winding down and then that's gone. And you begin to see some snow coming down into the plains. And this is uh, part of the next weather system. This is the one that uh, the GFS uh, was uh, showing uh, for the uh, mid-Atlantic states. And that is becoming less and less of a factor in time. Now, let me just take a look. Let's, let's go close up on the first event. Uh, and when we get, get to a, the Northeast region, and you're gonna see, and I'm gonna show you um, all the variations of the NAM model because there are some differences here. The NAM of all the models we look at, uh, be it the GFS, Canadian, European, RGEM, and so on, uh, pretty much is the one that was the furthest north. It, it seems to have come south a little bit here um, from the last run. So there's your snow uh, right there. So it's, very, it's a very narrow area, eastern Pennsylvania, uh, southeastern New York and the darker heavy snows in the blues. And the NAM model, by the way, generates about a half to three quarters of an inch of liquid. So that's something I want to pay attention to because that's that's a, a fair amount of liquid precipitation that it's producing. And if the air is marginally cold, if that winds up falling as all snow, you could have a, somebody could wind up with four, five or six inches of heavy wet snow someplace, especially where there's a little bit of elevation at play. We don't have a deep cold air mass, obviously, so we're going to have to work with whatever we have in terms of cold air, and then it moves out, so you can see it there. Now, here's the, this is the 12-kilometer NAM, which is usually the standard one that we look at uh, as far as um, what, it, what we think is going to happen, but there are 
other variations of the NAM with a tighter grid. And, and this is the total snowfall. So in the lighter uh, bluish areas would correspond to the three inches or more. And you can see there's kind of strands of that through parts of central New Jersey. But then you get into more concentrated areas in northern New Jersey, over Long Island, even some four inch, five inch uh, possibilities in the darker shades of purple. And again, this is this area has shifted further south from the prior run. Now, uh, when we look at the three kilometer NAM, uh, the three kilometer NAM snow wise uh, is a little more bullish uh, with snow, especially for Long Island and southern Connecticut, southeastern New York and northern New Jersey. It has some four and five inch amounts uh, uh, showing. Uh, that's the three kilometer and the four kilometer. Um, a little bit more bullish. It actually has some six and seven inch amounts. Now, look, just because the models show that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I think given the temperature profiles, we really want to kind of scale it back. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking on the order of, you know, where the heaviest snow falls, it'll be a two to three inch band of uh, heavy snow that will probably fall of, of, of accumulating snow. I shouldn't say heavy snow, of accumulating snow. Uh, and I think it's going to be basically in the same areas that it has been, which is along and north of Route 78 uh, in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So that would kind of match up with what the NAM has. And and you go south of 78, you're going to start to run into um, <clears throat> uh, lower amounts, so probably a higher amount of variability. But it's been along and north of Route 78 all along this winter. So, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that patterns repeat themselves uh, throughout a season. And unless you show me otherwise... So I'm thinking that that's um, what it's going to be. So that's the four kilometer. Just to review again, uh, here's the 12 kilometer NAM in terms of the snowfall. This probably is the one that makes the most sense. It's the most conservative of the bunch. So it would be, you know, a two to three, two to in, four to inch snowfall. And again, we're going to have to wait till Thursday. I'm going to have to wait till late tomorrow to see what the temperature profiles of the bottom of the atmosphere look like to really determine you know, how much of that is really going to uh, accumulate and stick. Uh, if it's going to be a wet snow, there's going to be a lot of compact, uh, compacting and so on. So we'll see what happens. On the order of things, this is not, I, I, you know, I don't view four inch or less snowfalls as big deals. I, I don't treat them as big deals. And I think you as um, an audience member, I know my YouTube audience is, you know, you guys are much more in tune with all this stuff and you're not, you know, you don't run around like babies in panic going out to get milk and bread and all that other nonsense. Um, you know, it's a two to four inch snowfall. This is this should not be uh, a problem. So we get through that. And now I want to go to the GFS because we're going to go out a little bit further in terms of time. And this was the GFS from last night, which also got a little bit more bullish and a little further south than its prior run. So it kind of matches up pretty well in terms of the snowfall. But I want to go to um, the, the uh, wider view so we can start taking a look at what the long range has to offer. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to take you through the surface map first. And then we're going to go through the upper air because that's important. Okay, so we still have this, <clears throat> what seems to be this lead system that comes out in the south. But notice every day this week, every run of the model, that system's been weaker, weaker, weaker. And that is the case on this run. Uh, and of course, because it's weaker, it actually is colder. So the snow area moves southward uh, into North Carolina. It's almost into the South Carolina border now. And there's very little, if anything, that goes on probably just north of the Virginia line. Uh, the Virginia North Carolina line. This first lead low goes out, but there's still energy that gets left back in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is something that the Canadian model did yesterday afternoon. And when I looked at it yesterday afternoon, which is after I cut my, uh, the, the video, I looked at it and I said, you know, it might be onto something here. Uh, and sure enough, what the Canadian yesterday uh, started showing the idea of, a, of an important storm coming up the East Coast early next week. The European was not quite there, but it was getting to that idea. It, if you looked at the European carefully yesterday, it was telling you that this first system was really going to be something not important and you would wind up with uh, something more important coming out later. Now, here's where, what we have. You've got this system, that, that next system on Monday comes into uh, the middle Mississippi Valley. There's, a, there's an inverted trough here. Uh, probably some kind of low center, low pressure somewhere in, in northwestern Arkansas, if you want to draw something. 
and then that low starts to organize. It's not a very intense low by any means. Uh, you've got a, a low <clears throat> sitting in southern Kentucky, you know, snow across Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Big high on either side, so you've got cold air, and cold air is wedging down uh, the Appalachian. So there's some kind of low also, uh, lower pressures off the Florida coast. And what happens is you start to get energy was the upper trough begins to swing around and you wind up with a developing secondary storm that intensifies as it moves off the North Carolina, Virginia coast. And you can see it here. This is for next Tuesday. And this is where the GFS and the Canadian pretty much had the same idea, a pretty wrapped up low uh, that uh, that would produce a, a, um, a major snowstorm here in the Northeast. Now, look, I'm not forecasting that. I'm just telling you what the model is showing. And you can look and see that that's what the model is doing. But I want to explain, you know, why it does this. Because um, this is going to be an illustration of what happens when you get into a blocking pattern and all, all the puzzle pieces were to come together. Uh, by the way, this, uh, one of the things that I want to uh, take away from all of this um, is that, all the models seem to be on the same page. They all have different variations of how this comes out. This is the Canadian model, but it's the same idea. Even though the specifics are a little bit different in terms of placement of lows and that kind of sort of thing, it's the same idea. So I think we have to decide first whether there is going to be some sort of important storm development. And once we get that idea locked in, and I think we, we still have another several days before we can... Um, you know, say this for, this for sure, but once we get that idea locked in, then we can start to figure out, okay, where's the track? What's it going to be? What's it going to mean for, you know, the coast? What it's, was it, what it's going to mean for inland areas and snow, so on. But you can see the Canadian does this, has the same idea as the GFS. The European has a, has a similar idea, um, but it has an option that is certainly possible, and that is that the weather system coming down doesn't dig quite enough and you wind up with the same storm, but it, you wind up with everything further north. And, and that's what the, the, the European does. So this would suggest that this could be a, a major snowstorm for New England, but for areas from uh, southwestern New England southward, it wouldn't amount to very much. So but I, I think that's an option that's certainly on the table. So why don't we now look at the upper air? Because this is, I'm, I'm really glad this wound up showing up so that even if it, we wind up where nothing happens out of this, you can at least see how these puzzle pieces come together in terms of uh, a, of a storm uh, in the east because you don't get them too often like this with, but blocking is usually the way where you can see uh, some important snowfall so if it's going to happen uh, it's going to happen uh, uh, you know this is the, the puzzle pieces are here all right now if we look at the upper air so of course you know the first system goes by the, the system in the south is not as a non-event and a non-factor but here you have it. Now we're going into um, Monday of, of uh, next week. And all the puzzle pieces are here. I think the most important part of this is going to be this ridge in the west. Because this is the first time in, in, the, in this winter season that we've actually seen this uh, to this magnitude. It's made some vague appearances and some weak appearances. But... Uh, this is the first time that we've seen it um, make an appearance where it really gets going in a big way. And uh, we, we are going to have to see if that is really uh, real, okay? Because remember, we've spent a, a winter where the uh, models have continuously tried to weaken the ridge, any kind of ridging in, in the West, and show a trough there so uh you're going to uh, we're going to have to determine the reality here of that being the case uh, whether that ridge is real the other thing is the other important thing is here is the block and that's right there so what that does is it displaces the vortexes further south and 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 you have energy that's coming down around one of them and that's the energy here that's going to um precipitate development and you also have this leftover southern energy here uh, that the model is showing. So what happens is uh, over time, as that trough swings around, you see how that swings around and it digs down into Kentucky and Tennessee. That's very important that it does that digging. And then you have um, the result. 
which is this, you have this ridge in the west, you have this negatively tilted trough. When I say negatively tilted, I mean it's tilted from the northwest to the southeast and lifting up. That is a, that is a strong uh, upper air signature for a developing storm. And this is for a developing coastal storm. And that's what you have here uh, in terms of what the models are showing. Um, and the, again, I think the key to this is going to be the ridge in the west. We're going to have to also pay attention to what's going on here in the Gulf of Alaska. You see that trough that's there? Because you have that trough digging down, that cause, you know, that digs down that way, that causes the ridge to build up. And, and that is uh, going to be extremely important and a factor to watch. And of course, this thing really gets wrapped up here on the GFS as it lifts up to the north and to the east. So, you know, all the puzzle pieces are here. Whether the puzzle pieces come together or not is a whole nother matter. Now, when we look at the Canadian model, same idea, okay? Same idea. Digging trough, you see it there, ridge in the, Pacific, in the west, digging trough into the Ohio Valley, and then it swings around and goes negative. And, you know, very much like the GFS has it, block that's there at the beginning to cause this whole process to get underway. The European, on the other hand, okay, when you look at the European and this is one of the things we'll have to pay attention to. If you look at the European, the, the uh, ridge in the west is not quite as pronounced, okay, because you, the trough off in the Gulf of Alaska is not as deep. So you get some digging, but you don't get enough. And that's why the European wound up being further north with this. And I think, you know, to, to be absolutely fair, you still wind up with this thing getting wrapped up. It just winds up being further north. And I think that's a real... You know, that is a that is a real option. If you don't get that ridge to fly up the way the other two models have it, if it winds up being flatter here in the West, you're going to wind up with an overall flatter look and development is going to wind up being further north. If that ridge takes off and you get this deep trough that, that, that forms out in the Pacific, then you're going to wind up with a, a coastal storm further south. So, you know, I, I think my takeaway on all of this is the puzzle pieces for an important storm in the east are there. Do they come together? Whole nother matter entirely. And it's going to be at least four, three or four more days or maybe longer before we know for sure. Uh, because, you know, as we know, a lot can change. We are basically less than seven days away. So we're, we're starting to enter the, the time frame where the uh, variability is going to be less and less. And I would also point out that, you know, we could have several model runs now that say the ridge is going to be flatter and then go back to a more developed look. Or we could have the models continue to show a developed strong ridge in the West uh, up through, um, you know, the end of this week. And then suddenly as we get closer to the event going into next weekend, uh, it starts to sh say, well, maybe the ridge is not going to be that strong. So. I think in the end, the key is really going to be what goes on here in the West. All along this winter, as a note of caution, all along this winter, uh, the models have tried to make ridges in the West, um, not to this radical extent, but they've tried to make some ridging in the West. Uh, they have only succeeded a few times. Uh, most of the time, uh, they have uh, not succeeded. Uh, and we've seen a couple of instances where the models flip back and suddenly there's a trough there. I don't think you're going to see that. I think the ridge is going to be there. It's a question of whether it's, you know, is, is it going to be a really strong ridge in the west that goes all the way up? Are you going to have this trough deep in the Gulf of Alaska to allow for that ridge to really fly and to allow for this trough to dig? Or is it going to be uh, this slightly flatter look that uh, the European is giving us so that really kind of wraps it up in terms of explaining all of this so there's a lot of food for thought here and of course we'll have the day run uh, models that will be coming out shortly and we'll evaluate those and see how it plays and, and again uh, do not look at these things in sort of the unequivocal absolutes because we are going to see change uh, in all of this but no doubt in my mind that at least from, from at the very least right now what we're seeing are these puzzle pieces that are in place and now we're going to have to see if those gears change in size and magnitude i often use that gear analogy of uh, you know gears in, in the in, in the in a toy box uh turning them around and around um but you know we are going to um, see what today's model runs do all right 
I will have no number of posts on the website today, meteorologistjochoffee.com, and Angry Ben will have his perspective on all of this on nycweathernow.com. I will be putting links in the comments section so you can go to them, and there will also be links set up at the top of the video uh, that you can uh, check out as well. And uh, you can also download my app and subscribe to my forecast for New York City, uh, Long Island, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Hudson Valley, and Connecticut. The app is free, and uh, it's just 99 cents a month for a specific forecast, plus you get everything else, okay? And uh, there'll be a card up at the top of the video. If you're interested, you can just click on the link there and uh, go to it. So uh, everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.